This is Chemistry Podcast 9.7, and we are going to talk about what a titration is and how you can do titration calculations. So the first thing is a titration, well, an acid-base titration deals with neutralization reactions. And a neutralization reaction is when you take an acid and a base and you react them. You always produce a salt and water. And a salt is not NaCl like you're thinking. A salt is an ionic compound that's made up of the base um, and the acid that were reacted. So it's the other product that's not water. And when you're doing these neutralization reactions, you're going to treat them just like double replacement reactions. So to get an idea of these, we're going to write a couple down. We're going to do a couple of these acid-base reactions so that you can see how they work. The first one here is sodium hydroxide and hydrobromic acid. Sodium hydroxide is NaOH and hydrobromic acid is HBr. When we put these together we do a double replacement reaction. So the sodium is going to go with the bromine and the hydrogen is going to go with the hydroxide. This hydrogen off the acid and the hydroxide off the base that's going to produce the water. And then the other product, the salt, would be the sodium bromide. And sodium is a plus one, bromine is a minus one, so they go together in a one-to-one -one ratio. And then if I look, I have two hydrogens on this side, two hydrogens on this side. I have an oxygen and an oxygen. Everything is balanced. I don't need to add any coefficients. On the second one, we have barium hydroxide. And barium is in column 2A, so it's a plus two charge. Hydroxide is a minus one. So when I write this out, I'm going to need two hydroxides. And because it's a polyatomic ion, I have to put it in parentheses. And then I have nitric acid. Nitric acid is listed under your common acids on the back of your periodic table. And then our double replacement this time is going to be water still. So even though there's one hydrogen here and there's two hydrogens and two oxygens here, you might be thinking that doesn't make water. Well, it's going to make a number of waters, but it's still water. So even though it doesn't look like the number of atoms you have should add up to water. Like this one up here obviously was water because it was two H's and an O. This one though, once we balance it, it'll work out. So it's still water, and then I'm going to put the barium with the nitrate. And nitrate is a negative one. So that means I'm going to also need two nitrates with the barium. That's the salt. And then I need to balance this out. So two nitrates, two nitrates, I have two and four hydrogens, so I'm going to also have to put a two in front of the water. And that's how we can see that now I have two hydrogens plus two hydrogens is four hydrogens and two oxygens. This part right here goes together to make two waters. And when it's all balanced out, it makes a little bit more sense. So just remember, with these acid-base reactions, water is always one of the products and then you get something else, and that something else is called a salt. When we're setting up these titrations, we're going to use a setup that looks like this. We have a burette, and you're going to hold it onto a ring stand with the burette clamp, and then we're going to have the Erlenmeyer flask under it. If you remember when we did the lab, um, and we were figuring out whether Sprite or, so Sprite or 7-Up was the stronger acid, it's the same type of deal. We're just using um, more accurate glassware to measure volume instead of just counting drops. So if we were doing that same setup, the Sprite or the 7-Up would go into the flask. Whatever you're trying to find the concentration of goes into the flask. The solution that you know the concentration of goes into the burette, and that's called the titrant. And the titrant is something that you usually make and you know the concentration of. So you put that into the burette and you slowly drop it in here. We use an indicator and usually it's phenolphthalein, just like we did when we were doing the 7-Up and the Sprite. We add the titrant until it turns a pink color and then we know to stop. So with these titrations, what the overall goal is to find the concentration of a solution that's placed in this flask. The titrant is what goes into the burette and then there's also an endpoint and an equivalence point. The endpoint is where the indicator changes color, and for us it's mostly 
the phenolphthalein going from clear to pink. There are other indicators you can use, and we'll talk about those in a few minutes. But the end point of a titration is when the indicator changes color. That is what signifies to us the equivalence point has been reached. The equivalence point is when the moles of your acid equal the moles of your base. You've added enough H plus to react with all the OH minus, or you've added enough OH minus to react with all of the H plus. You have equal moles of these and you've produced water, it's been neutralized. The equivalence point is not something we can see, because when you titrate hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide, for instance, you're not going to see anything change about the solution. Nothing is going to visually look different. So what we do is we use the indicator so that we can tell when we've reached the equivalence point. Because the indicator changes color very close to the equivalence point, we need both of those in order to know when to stop the titration. Here's a selection of indicators. There are more than this. There's a vast number of indicators you can choose. Um, you can see that it all depends on pH. So what you have to do is figure out what is going to be the pH of your resulting solution, and then you can pick out the um, indicator that would work best for you. For us, because we're mostly doing the acids and bases, it ends up around 7 for a strong acid and strong base, and that's right here. And it doesn't change colors until about an 8 or a 9. So it's close to what we're doing when it changes colors. It's close to that equivalence point, but it's not exactly on there. It's close enough, though, that we can use it and still get pretty reliable results. So phenolphthalein, we like it. It's easy to tell when it goes from clear to pink. Some of these others, it's a little harder to judge. Um, when does it actually switch from red to yellow? Because you get that orange part in the middle, and it's really hard to know sometimes when you should stop your titration, when have you reached the end point. But with phenolphthalein, it's a little more obvious. That's why we like to use it in class, because it makes judging when to stop the titrations a lot easier. So when we do this titration with the burette, you're going to fill the burette. In our case, it's going to be with sodium hydroxide, and you'll have your acid down here in the flask. You're going to start, and you're going to keep swirling the flask in order to ensure that everything gets mixed up. At some point, though, when you drop in the sodium hydroxide, it's going to flash pink, and it's going to take it a little longer to disappear. Just like when we were um, titrating the sodas, you saw that after a while, you had to shake the test tube for... Um, a number of seconds before the pink disappeared. The same thing's going to be true. You're going to have to swirl the flask for a little bit longer for the pink to disappear, and that's your cue that you need to slow down. You're going to start wanting to add the sodium hydroxide drop by drop, not very fast, making sure it gets incorporated and mixed in really well with the acid. At some point, it will become a light pink, and that is your end point. You want to stop when it's a light pink. If you get to the point that it's a hot pink like in figure four, then you have gone too far and you should probably run your titration again. Another neat thing about titrations is that you can plot the pH versus the volume of your titrant. And in this case, the volume of the titrant or what was in the burette was a base. So the flask is where we monitor the pH. And before we start out, we can see that the pH is pretty low. So the pH of an acid is below 7, and it should be pretty low. As we start adding the base to it, it starts to become neutralized. We start reacting with some of that H+. You can see that the pH rises a bit, but there comes a point when it spikes and jumps up. That jump right there is where we usually see the equivalence point. And this picture... I think probably should be scooted down just a little bit. The equivalence point, remember, is where the moles of your acid equal the moles of your base. Your H plus equals your OH minus. And that normally happens more towards the middle of this straight jump right here. So titration curves all look this way. They may be a little bit different, but their general look is like this. And um, that's something you would get to um, if you move farther on to AP chemistry. We talk more about titration curves. So the last thing, we're doing these titrations to calculate a concentration, so we better talk about how you do that. 
The first step is always to write a balanced chemical reaction, how we started this podcast. How does the acid and the base react? What do we get? The second step is to find the moles of titrant used. So I'm going to know in the burette the concentration of whatever that was. So say, for example, it was 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Well, I'm going to know the volume that I had to use of the titrant, how much of that sodium hydroxide did I add to the flask. And since I know its molarity as well, I can solve for moles. So in this step number two, what you're going to do is you're going to solve for the moles because you're going to plug in the molarity, which you'll know, and then you'll convert your milliliters to liters and solve for moles. The next step is to use your balanced equation and convert from moles of your titrant to moles of the other substance that was in the flask. So if you had sodium hydroxide in the burette, then you're going to have to convert to the acid that you were putting it into. So you're going to use the balanced chemical reaction to go from moles of your titrant to moles of whatever was in the flask. So that's just a one-step stoichiometry problem. And then for step four, you take that answer, because that's the moles of what's in the flask, and you divide it by the liters. When you put it into the flask, you're going to very carefully measure the volume. So you'll know how much of that acid, in our case, um, went into that flask. So moles divided by liters will give us the molarity, and that's what we're trying to find out with these titration calculations. We're going to do one example together. This practice problem says 43 milliliters of an unknown concentration of sodium hydroxide was titrated with hydrochloric acid. What was the molarity of the sodium hydroxide solution? The first thing you want to do is write the balanced chemical reaction. So I'm going to get water and sodium chloride. And that's all balanced. It's a 1, 1, 1, 1 for the balancing. I know I have 43 milliliters of this, and I have 32 milliliters of this. The acid was 0.1 molar, and I don't know what the molarity of my sodium hydroxide was. So after you write the balanced equation, the second step is to figure out how many moles of your titrant you had. So the molarity was 0.1. That has to be some number of moles for 0 0.032 liters. So I just converted that to liters. X comes out at 0 0.0032 moles of HCl. So that was the second step. The third step is to do a stoichiometry using the balanced reaction. In this case, it's one mole of HCl to one mole of NaOH. All I do is just plug those in. Just like I'm doing a stoichiometry problem, a mole to mole ratio. That allows me to switch substances. That's going to equal the same number. So now I have 0 0.0032 moles of NaOH. And then that last step, the fourth one, is to figure out what is the molarity then of my NaOH. If I know I have this many moles of NaOH and I can convert that to liters, I can calculate molarity. So it's going to be 0 0.0032 divided by my 0 0.043. This was the moles and the liters. And when I divide those out, I get 0 0.0744 molar. So that is the answer to this question. I've solved for what the molarity of my unknown solution was, which was the sodium hydroxide. And that was the main goal of doing this titration. There is a shortcut you can use. If the mole ratio is 1 to 1, so for example, in that problem that we just did, it was sodium hydroxide and HCl. It's written here again, giving us H2O and NaCl. Because I didn't have to put any coefficients out in front, that's a 1 to 1 ratio. For every one of these that go in, it reacts with one of these. That is what this means. I'm able to use this equation, the MAVA equals MBVB. Big M is molarity. These A's right here stand for the acids, so the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid has to equal the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. And that's because the moles of my acid have to equal the moles of my base. And we can use this equation 
and figure it out in one step instead of having to do the other three steps that we talked about earlier. It is okay to use milliliters when you're doing this formula right here, it'll work out. So we're gonna take that same problem that we just did and I'm gonna plug it in quickly here so you can see how this works. The molarity of the acid was 0.1 molar and I know that I used 32 milliliters of the acid. That's equal to some molarity of my base multiplied by the volume of my base. So I'm gonna multiply and divide by 43 and I'm gonna end up with the same answer that I just got on the previous steps that I did. So instead of having to do all those steps, this is a shortcut we can do when it's a one to one ratio. So those are how you do calculations for titrations, how you can figure out what the concentration is when you're titrating. Um, make sure you can write the neutralization reactions between an acid and a base. And if you want to make your life easier, you want to remember that you can do that shortcut for the calculations, which is most of the time when we're doing these titrations, when it's a one-to-one -one ratio with the acid and the base.